<sighs> another day, another transition. Uh, hello, buddy. What's up? How you doing? Hope everybody's doing great. Welcome back to another gimmick tutorial. And this, like the three last videos, is going to be another transition. I know, I know. There's been a lot of those recently, but we'll, this will be the last one for the time being. This one is... I personally find it very cool, awesome. It's almost science fiction like, and let's just go through those and you'll see what happen. I've aptly named it Lines, as you'll see why. <laughs> so, everything it is can be adjusted the amount of stripes or lines, if you want to call them, the speed, and as you can see, whether they're horizontal or vertical. And I find it pretty awesome. I hope you'll like it. And if you have any ideas for future videos, then be sure to put on the comment section. But enough chit chatting, let's get the Game Maker Studio. Here we go. As we can see, we already have a lot of things in the Game Maker Studio. We can see this is basically the same setup that we had just a few seconds ago, just without the transition itself. The doors are here, everything is here, except the transition, anything that has to do with that. There's some collision detection, a few sprites, a few objects. The most important one that we're going to need for this tutorial is the assist transition here. It needs to be visible and persistent. For now, it's empty. And no budget door which for now just has a game set the image speed to zero. These two are the most important things that we will need for this turn. But you don't actually have this need to be a door to be honest. It can be that you click an object, that the player goes somewhere, some kind of trigger, doesn't matter. But I'm gonna show you with the door here. To get things rolling we want to open this transition, add in a create event and drag in some code. Drag in some code, thank you. Call this initialize variables and run alarm. This alarm will, after the alarm has been run, that we're gonna create in a minute, yeah, about a minute, it will be determining the amount of time the transition will take and whether it's horizontal or vertical because this cannot be taken care of in the create event. As uh, the create event just happened, it, we can change it in time. Because of that, I will have to create a few variables here, or actually a lot of variables. First of all, we'll call it create one stripes or line. I like to call it stripes. This is basically the amount of stripes that you use. For my screen uh, screen size, this is perfect, 100. We'll create one called anim. After this will, when this is true, the transition will start, and we'll set it true in the next in alarm. I'm going to create. We'll have to create height, which will be window get width. No, sorry. Height divided by stripes. We'll have to get a width. Now the window get width plus window get width divided by five. This is also this is not really this number can be changed all around. I personally find this to be good, but if you think that the transition has some problems on your screen, then you can change it around if you want. Next, what we'll need is a timer. We'll set minus width. We want a room change. Set that to false. And a max timer. Set that to window. Get width. Okay, there's a lot of stuff going on here. This is basically the width and height of the, the stripes, each stripe. This can, these two will change place if it's vertical, but right now it's made that if the transition is horizontal. This will determine whether or not the animation has started. This is the total amount of stripes. This will be, timer will be run as the slowest stripe on the screen. As when the slowest stripe on the screen has reached the end, the transition is over. Room change will determine if the screen is filled with stripes and we can actually change room now. And max timer is when the everything is finished and we want to delete or uh, destroy this transition. A lot of things going on at the same time. After this, we'll have to do some uh, arrays for this. I'll just name them first. Stripe 1. Stripe 2. Length and stripe speed these will be stripe speed all the way to the last hundredth stripe and we'll set them to zero because we want to 
give them the correct number that they need in the alarm. So that's no worry, we'll set them zero. As you saw in the beginning of this video, the way this transition works is that there's a stripe on the left side and a stripe on the right side, and they move both at the same speed until they meet in the middle, go through each other, and then go out and separate at the end and go out the screen. This will be the X position on the left stripe. This will be the X position on the right side. This will be the Y position of each stripe. And this will be the speed of each stripe. I hope that wasn't too difficult. Next thing we'll just run run alarm and hey here we'll run alarm zero which we will use we'll set that to zero to one and we want to set x x well, well, minus one and y y to minus one this will be later used when we change room to see if we need to change the player position as well now we're done here, we can go close that out and open alarm zero and add in a code. Here, we'll now finish the arrays and start transition. I can't even spell correctly. Start animation transition, much correct, more correctly. So we'll set now, get some references. Just gonna do it like this for you. Byport zero. Okay, create two variables here, stripe width, window width, width, copy, paste it under, change width to height, and W to H here. Then I got all the references I need. And I'll just do a finished erase. I'll get to that in a second, however, because there's one more thing that needs to be done. I need to open our emulation lies. Go to the creation code and add an enumerator in here. Enum transition. It's gonna be the name. And we'll call it stripe for for the horizontal stripe and stripe where for the vertical. That's all that we needed here. We'll then in alarm do a switch. Okay, there was one thing we forgot in the trans in the create event apparently if I remember right. And yes, we did forget it. That will be a few of the most important ones, of course. That will actually run the transition. Put them right here. We'll set next room to equal no one. We'll set kind, which is basically the tr kind of transition that we have, to equal transition dot stripe. And time to equal 60 for now. 60 frames is, is, seems okay. Huh. Can't believe I forgot that. Now, switch on kind here. And we'll say case transition dot stripe or boom and go down a few and break. Copy this. Go down one more and add it here. And we want stripe where, where, there. First thing here, we'll set max timer to equal stripe width, like that. Next, we'll go to a little bit down to say create a for loop and set var i equal to stripes, like that. i is greater than zero and i minus minus. This way, we'll go through all the stripes. And we want to do stripe 1 of i, it will be equal to x minus west. So basically put it exactly line exactly out of view on the left side. We'll do for same for this for the stripe 2, but we want to do a little bit different. We'll do stripe plus stripe width, which is basically on the complete right side of the screen, plus width meaning that is completely out of view again length that i will be equal to i times stripe h divided by stripes so place each stripe under each other until the end of the screen and the last one will be stripe speed of i will be equal to random range let me see width 
divided by time. Column width divided by time plus time divided by eight. This will basically just give us two different, a few different speeds so that they don't have the exact same speed. Now we can actually just copy all of this into here. Uh, I'll just go into creative and pick up a little bit something else too and that is these and put them right up there let's fit your port in the correct place so earlier this was like that we want to change it a little bit around we want this to be the width to be divided by window width divided by stripes. And we want this to be window height plus window get height divided by five. There. That should be correct. And timer should be divided minus height. Oh, there's a few things that need to be changed here. Height from W to H. And there's a little problem there. Wait, 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 no, 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 that was a bit of a problem. With, we need to move this one down here and this one up there. Okay, so height will be now window get width divided by stripes and width will be window get height, blah, blah, blah. Here we get it. This will still be minus width. This will be equal to stripe height. And everything else should this need to be with. And everything is correct. That should be everything done in the alarm. Next we need to add in a step event and not only a normal one, but a begin step event. And I just said begin step, change event, step, begin step. There, thank you. And we'll first see, we'll just see, check for, check for transition finish, I would call it that, but there's a few more things that's happening here. First we'll check if I, the animation should be run or not, right yet, and then we'll do for bar equals strap like we did just a few seconds ago, I is greater than zero, I minus minus, We'll do stripe one i plus equal stripe speed i and just copy this down one to over to two and minus equal. Then it will do timer plus equal width divided by time. This basically makes this run as the slowest stripe on the screen. Then to decide when the screen is fully covered. And next thing is if timer plus width is greater than max timer divided by two, so the transition is halfway done, and not room change, that the room shape hasn't been done yet, but we'll do, first of all, just set room change to true, so we don't do this multiple times. So true room go to RM no next room there and then we'll have to check whether or not the we need to change the player's X position. So if X is not equal to minus one, that means that it's been changed, which means that we need to do change the player position. OBJ player dot X equals X X there. And if yy is not equal to minus one, obj play dot y equals yy. There. One more thing we need to do that is to check if timer is greater than max timer. And we want to do an instant destroy. That means that the transition is over. Next up, and the last event in this object will be a draw GUI event. And we'll get to that in a sec. The text in the code for draw GUI will I have already on my clipboard, but I'll paste in here. The thing that happens in here is the first thing is we have a switch on the kind. Well, the transition, whether it's stripe four or stripe where, 
vertical or horizontal to the color. This can you can change whenever you want. But this is the main bulk of it. This is the most important part of drawing it. Another four loop that for, uh, loops through all of the stripes that we're going to draw. Draw draw one rectangle, rectangle first. Draw one. Stripe one. Which is on the left side. And then one for stripe two. And the same will happen for the... Oh my god, I can't see Oh no, for the vertical version of this. The placement on the screen will be length, and the other y the corner will be length minus height, and you can see they're the same here. So I'll wait another few seconds, let you copy this to your code, and then we can continue. So in quick dimension, there is one most important thing that we forgot to do, and that is the alarm zero. At the end of everything, we want to set anim equals true, which basically will start the transition. Most important thing, I mean, I almost forgot it. Here we go! Transition is finished, the run test is running as it's supposed to be, and here we go. Walking from the door, then press up, and the transition starts to run. Working perfectly. It's a little bit faster than it was in the beginning of the video, but we'll something to live with for now. You can change that by changing the steps in the OBJ door, or any other trigger that you have. The lower the steps, the faster it will go, the higher the steps, the slower it will go. Just make sure that when you go faster, some faster than a specific number, depends on the screen size and everything. The lines may be out of order and the room will maybe not change in time, so that's something to have in mind. And also something else that I mentioned in the beginning of the video that I would like to mention again is the fact that I'm always free to set for suggestions for future videos and you can use the comment section on my Facebook and Twitter which I'll put in the screen and in the description if you want to look. If you want to add, and you can contact me at any time there, and I'll come back to you as soon as possible. So until next time, have a good time, and have a great day.